If you're new to wood turning, working with green wood sounds, I don't know, kind of weird. If you already do woodwork, chances are you work with dry wood. Most of us go to the lumber yard and get pieces of wood that's been dried down to 12% or even less. It's relatively stable and well behaved and it's easy to work with. It's what we know. Working with a piece of raw wood like this just seems kind of strange and alien. And for the longest time, I didn't get the point. I probably did wood turning for five or six months, turning entirely dry wood. And the appeal of that was really simple. I could take a piece of wood, put it on the lathe, turn the inside and the outside, scrape it, sand it, finish it, take it off the lathe, and be done in one session. When you can do that, it's really difficult to understand why you would do things any other way. Until one day, I finally got really curious, and I threw a piece of green wood on the lathe. And... Holy crap! Maybe this green wood thing is worth a look after all. The best thing about turning green wood is you will not believe how easy it cuts. It is incredibly soft compared to dry wood. So for instance, I have several blanks of this oak. I don't know exactly what species of oak it is, but it is rock hard. I've turned a couple bowls out of this stuff, but I don't think I'm going to do any more. It's honestly too much trouble for what I get. But if this wood were still wet, it would be a different story. For instance, this is a piece of Siberian elm. It is another really dense hard wood, kind of similar to oak. And in the wet state, it turns really easily, and I can make some beautiful work with it. If this piece were dry, I honestly wouldn't bother with it. It's just too much trouble. Another thing to think about is that if you only work with flat pieces of kiln-dried hardwood, you might make some really good stuff, but your work might end up looking, I don't know, a little bit bland. For artistic turnings, there are all sorts of things you might find in a tree that you might want to incorporate in your bowl. For instance, here's a cherry bowl that I just finished last week. It's made from a piece of green crotch wood, so the grain is really swirly and has a really interesting design and texture. It's got knots and imperfections, and obviously I left the bark and the live edge on. This is the sort of thing you just can't do with wood from the lumber yard. If you want to get adventurous like this, you're going to have to grab a log and learn how to work with it. So, if we're going to turn something like this, how do we do it? Well, the good news is it's not very complicated. The first thing we want to do is rough it out. You don't have to make it into a perfect circle, but take it over to the bandsaw and knock off as many of the corners and sharp angles as you can. Get it roughly round. Then you need to mount it on the lathe somehow. There's a bunch of different ways that you can do this, just for the rough turning. If you've got a flat surface on it someplace, then you can use either a worm screw in your chuck or a face plate. Both of these methods work great, but sometimes you have a very irregular piece this piece is pretty irregular, and neither one of those things will work. In that case, I recommend setting it up between centers, with a spur center on one side and a live center in your tailstock. With the piece mounted between centers, you can rough out the outside and create either a tenon or a recess in the bottom, so you can flip it around and grab it in your chuck. If you don't have a chuck, you could also attach a glue block and do it with a faceplate. Both methods work fine. Once you've got your bowl flipped around in either the chuck or the face plate, you're going to want to hollow the inside and do any additional shaping to the outside. Get the shape mostly finished. At this point, you're going to have to take it off the lathe and dry it somehow. Now, drying wet bowls is a huge topic, and I could do a bunch of different videos on the different ways of doing it. It's kind of beyond the scope of what we're doing here, so let me just tell you what I do. I turn my bowls till they're about 90% of the finished thickness. Then I take them off the lathe and I take them to the microwave. I have one in my shop that I only use for wood turning so my food doesn't get nasty. I put the bowl in and I microwave it for 30 seconds on high and then I take it out. The piece of wood is going to be pretty hot at this point. It should be sort of hard to touch. That's a good sign. That means the water in the wood is getting heated up and driven off by the microwave. Leave it out on a bench someplace until it's cool to the touch. 
then put it back in the microwave and nuke it for another 30 seconds. I just repeat this process over and over again until the piece of wood seems to stop losing moisture. After I've microwaved it 15 or 20 times, I could stick it with a moisture meter to see how low the moisture is, but I don't own one and that's never really slowed me down. You can really tell by feel if you've gotten most of the water out. If you're taking it out of the microwave and it's barely warming up, that's a good sign. That means there isn't any water inside to heat up anymore. And you can also just feel how dry the wood is with your hands. They're a pretty good gauge for bowls like this. Once you're done microwaving it, just put it aside someplace for a week or maybe 10 days. If you're going to run into any trouble, this is where it'll happen. Occasionally, bowls, while they're drying, will just split horribly and fall apart. But that's almost never happened to me, and you probably don't have to worry about it. What I usually find happens is I do get some small cracks in the wood, but a lot of the time they don't even go all the way through. I can just fill them with a mixture of super glue and sawdust or maybe a little bit of epoxy. When they've had their week or 10 days and they're as dry as they're gonna get, then I can put them back on the lathe, do a little bit more shaping if necessary, scrape, sand, finish, and then my bowl's done. So when you work with green wood, the initial roughing works much faster, and you can get a more interesting bowl because you have a way wider variety of woods and imperfections and features that you can include. You have to dry the bowl somehow, and there's usually a little bit of waiting involved, but a lot of time, that's worth it for the final product. And hey, if you're a new turner or thinking about getting into turning and topics like this interest you, I'd like to recommend the book I just wrote. It's called One Week to Wood Turning, and it's a complete guide to the equipment of turning as a hobby or an art form. It tells you all about lathes, tools, grinders, grinding wheels, grinding jigs, setting up a turning studio, finding wood, finishing, and everything else. The book is 154 pages long, it's got 65 completely original illustrations, and it covers just about everything you could possibly need to know. So if you're a new turner or thinking about turning, go ahead and click on the link down in the description. I've got a page with more information and you can see if you're interested in buying the book, which also really helps the channel out a lot. And for everybody who watched this video, thanks so much for watching.